Many thanks to Joe Jaren, Daisy Podcast, Taggy Tag West, Black Knight, and Lion Loss for making this video possible. Daisy 1.16 may not have changed a lot at surface level, but peering just below our simulated reality hides a plethora of adjustments that have shaped Daisy for the better, while also endowing us with incredible insight into what to expect this year. So if you want to know exactly what changed in 1.16 and what's to come this year, this one's a must watch. <laughs> Starting with a new weapon type that a huge amount of people want to see added to the game is a new high tier sniper rifle called the CR550 which will function much like the CR527 already does in game. So this new sniper rifle will be a bolt action weapon too with the added benefit of being able to quickly reload like the CR527 due to it allowing a magazine. However the yet to be released CR550 comes with two magazines instead, a 4 round mag and a plentiful 10 round mag. Now because the rounds used by the CR550 and mags are the very destructive 308s used by the Tundra and the Blaze and the maximum ammo capacity of the CR550 is 11 rounds with the large magazine, it will mean this new sniper will likely outperform all other bolt action weapons in Daisy, but we'll just have to wait and see the other stats and attachments this weapon has before we know for sure. Either way, it's certainly going to rock the weapon meta boat. I believe this new powerful sniper will be released in 1.17 due to another precursor change that I've seen in this patch which is related to how these weapons cannot become jammed. This weapon jamming change sees that all bolt action weapons in Daisy no longer jam because bolt action weapons that have magazines like the CR527 and the Pioneer still became jammed in 1.15 where other bolt actions like the Mosin didn't. This brings more consistency to the very inconsistent weapon jamming stat where for example the BK-18 becomes jammed but the Blaze for some reason does not. Another welcome change to a ballistic stat is how long players go unconscious for after being shot which has changed a lot in favour for prolonging the duration of unconsciousness in 1.16. Here are the maximum times you could go unconscious in 1.15 with each ammo type in DayZ and these are the numbers for 1.16. The increases in some cases are quite substantial, for example assault rifles can KO you for pretty much twice the time as in 1.15, so up from 6.6 .6 to 12.5 at a maximum. The ammo types of Daisy were changed in another way this patch too, which comes in the form of penetration nerfs to the 556 by 45 rounds, now being 17% worse at penetrating all surfaces in the game. However, the weapons that use this round are still among the best weapons for penetration in Daisy due to the high bullet speed that this round has. A few penetration bugs were fixed in this patch too, such as finally being able to shoot through these garage doors now, shoot through these doors on this red brick house, and shoot through the open doorway of the gas station building here however you can't shoot through the door when it's closed and the blue doors on the big metal building still cannot be shot through in addition to this the hesco barriers that aren't as full as the other hesco barriers can be shot through very easily so be aware of these inconsistencies one of the best changes to come to this patch is how player built fences and gates can no longer be shot through which means metal walls are far superior to wooden walls as if you didn't know you could shoot through the panel here to destroy the frame behind. Now when this frame here behind gets destroyed the panel on the front would get deleted as it cannot exist without the frame resulting in walls that could be completely destroyed in less than 20 seconds where now it takes closer to one minute with the best weapons in the game that are very difficult to acquire. However, destroying the frame here will still delete the panel on the front so be very careful with how you position your fences and gates, especially with how you can now place structures on more uneven terrain in the game. This was added in 1.16, potentially creating weaknesses in your base's design by accident. As a final note here, because I'm sure some of you are wondering, the changes to panel penetration has not impacted the effectiveness of explosives on bases. Speaking of which, landmines do extra damage in this patch, but not extra damage to players, AI or items on the ground, extra damage to the wheels of vehicles. This means when you drive over a landmine, even if the tires don't touch it so it's like before, it will explode and cause a lot of damage to the tires in this patch which will make driving much harder with no tire, making you a much easier target, especially if you get knocked out too, which will probably happen. The bear trap was also changed in this regard in that it does a crazy amount of damage to vehicle wheels, ruining them in one hit from pristine. The difference is you have to run over the bear trap with the wheel or it won't activate the trap to destroy the tire and with the sedan and the V3S it sadly doesn't activate at all but this is experimental. Now easily the most awesome change when it comes to traps in this patch goes down to how the bear trap will now do more damage to animals. 
The landmine doesn't do extra damage to animals, but the bear trap does. In the patch notes, it does say how the bear trap will break the legs of infected with a very cool animation, I may add. But against a wolf, it would now one hit kill a wolf. In addition to this, just one hit of the bear trap would take more than 50% of a bear's health off, meaning two traps will kill a bear, or one trap and a few powerful rounds, meaning you can solo a bear if you have a bear trap quite easily now, making bear traps incredibly useful if you come across aggressive animals in the game, or even if you come across a group of infected that you can't handle on your own. For example, you can lay down a trap to incapacitate one of the infected while you fight another one, and then you can just lay it down again and let it crawl straight into your trap. Very cool. If you don't happen to have a bear trap and you've bitten off more than you can chew, you are now fully protected inside vehicles from not only wolves and infected, but bears too. They will still try to attack you and very, very rarely they can hit you, but this might just be a bug. But eventually the bear will get bored and it will run away even if you attack it. And with how the inside of vehicles are much warmer than the outside, vehicles you can't drive are still very useful in DayZ. However, if you find a vehicle that you can drive, well, let's just say that the tables have turned. Using some illegally screenshotted NFTs, I managed to hack into the DayZ matrix and came across an animation entry for the new stealth attack that's going to be added to DayZ, with this entry including the word NECK. Now unfortunately, I lack the social credit score required to view animations, but judging by what was in the code, it will include a method of stabbing the infected in the neck, much like we already have a stealth attack in the game, where we stab them with a knife in the back, one-shotting them. However, what interested me most here was how the spear animation was added with the stealth animation, along with a whole load of spear sounds. Now I could be as wrong about this as I was about the improvised bows that we're getting for Christmas, rip. But a neck stabbing stealth animation on an infected with a spear like some heavily diluted Spartan warrior gets me excited enough to pyramid head myself. And in the case of the spear, it may mean longer reaches to activate a stealth kill, making stealth kills easier. But then again, I have been wrong before and it might just be an alternate animation for stealth killing with a knife. The spear being added at the same time might just be a coincidence. I guess we'll find out soon enough. By this entry in the 1.16 patch notes, a lot of people were assuming the range of all melee attacks were reduced, but it's only the sprinting animations that had their range reduced. As you can see in 1.15, it's very unrealistic to hit an infected at this distance, but in 1.16, it was reduced by about 20%. There's a whole bunch of minor changes and I've grouped them all together, such as how the mushrooms are much, much better to eat in this patch. You can basically live off the land with this change by hunting down mushrooms all day. They are very beneficial as you can see from these numbers. The pumpkin size was reduced by five slots down to two by two. A nice change given that they only give two slices, which are also two by two. Another minor change is how the thermometer became a lot more accurate. It used to give you a range of around one whole Celsius. Now it's about 0.2 to 0.3. The gas stove was given a light effect in 1.16, but still doesn't burn you or warm you up. You can now cut all of these jackets and tops into rags, giving you three rags per item. And finally, there's now a yellow version of a motorbike helmet. Other than all of those changes, this patch is more on the smaller side because the focus in 1.16 is on bug fixing and preparing DayZ for the year ahead, which means it's a great time of year to tell the devs exactly what you want to see in DayZ this year because the devs have been known to watch my videos from time to time and perhaps they'll like the idea that you've made enough to add it to the game this year, who knows. Now, if you're wondering why I didn't add the bison or the alarm clock to this list, it's because I've already covered them in these two videos, links below if you want to see them. Thank you very much for watching until the very end of this video and hope you all have a fun year playing Daisy.